Hello. You can see I'm seated at the sewing machine. Go ahead and turn it on. First things first, put your sewing machine speed on slow if you have that capability. I added my zipper foot here, which is a closed toed foot, and you can use what you have. And I put it to a longer stitch length. Be sure and put your needle off center so that it will go in the notch of the zipper foot or whatever foot that you're using. And I want to bring to your attention um, that I simply tied another knot similar to the one when I started winding on to finish off the yarn before I brought the whole unit to the sewing machine. I'm going to lower the sewing foot and take a few stitches. Then I'm going to back up so that I can anchor my beginning stitches. I'm also going to have a 3x5 card or a business card handy so that I can keep the yarns down in front of the presser foot in case they tend to want to rise up over the presser foot. You're going to sew multiple times to create this header. And each time you sew it, I like to reduce the stitch length by a couple of notches if you have that capability. Even though I've done this hundreds of times, you can see that, you know, it's not going perfectly. So the fact that you may have to practice, you know, a half a dozen times or more to get it exactly the way you want it, you shouldn't feel bad about that. I'm almost to the end. I'm going to go in reverse here and stitch a couple of stitches. I'm going to go ahead forward again because I want to capture those end strands of my yarn and ribbon. When you're making fringe with multiple strands and ribbons you'll see that you'll have to do this several times so that you can make sure that you've captured everything wound onto the rods. You know it's just a simple little home sewing machine needle that we're using and you're trying to mimic commercial fringe. I'm going to, and this is just one I'm going to go ahead and put it back through again, and I may sew three or four, depending on your project that you're going to put this on. It might determine how many times you sew the header. You know, if it's in a guest room on a lampshade, it's only going to be turned on once a year. A couple of passes may be plenty. If it's something for your children that they're going to be playing with, tossing around, and showing their friends, and it's going to get quite a bit of abuse, then your fringe header um, may be deserving of a couple more passes than you would normally use. So I'm going to back it up again and catch those end strands. And you can see it goes on and on and on exactly like this repeatedly. Each time you can reduce the stitch length just a little bit so that you're not sewing in the exact same holes. It's your choice, of course. I found that that works pretty well. I didn't use any backing underneath this, but again, depending on what it is that you're sewing, you may want to add a little bit of a backing. So I would simply start again. Let me cut this out of your visual path here so that that's not interfering. I reduced my stitch length down now to 3.5. And again, you just simply make the same pass. Just guide it up and over the books, which stands as my um, extended working platform. But if you're lucky enough to have one of those platforms, go ahead and use that. Now, if you're thinking, gee, how can I get one of these? Because you know we all need one. Every single seamstress, home interior designer, upholsterer, crafter, scrapbooker, and so on would definitely ha want to have one of these. You can check your local baby lock dealer, or you can go to my website, myownfringemaker.com, and send us an email for a purchase. Thank you so much, and now I'm going to show you how to cut these.